Let me guess. You're here because you have some problem spots in your city and you're looking for some stranger on the internet to maybe give you some inspiration on how to fix those areas. Well, you're in luck. I am a stranger on the internet and I'm here to give you some potential inspiration on how to fix your problems. Hey, I'm Noodle Yeti. And this is the 28th part in a series we're doing where we built a city called Westdale. As you probably noticed in the intro, we have these huge lineups of people over here that are absolutely insanely long back up over into this area. And in fact, when I was watching it, people would actually despawn. That's how long they were sitting in these routes or in this particular traffic area here. We also have another area of traffic right over here as well as one that doesn't occur too often but when it does it backs up very badly and it's this intersection here in the middle of our screen where in the left hand turn lane from this direction the left hand turn lane turning onto this road of bus lanes will back up all the way to the roundabout in fact oh my goodness we actually have a whole bunch of people trying to get onto the roundabout right now so there's those are the potential areas that I would like to fix in this particular episode. And I've sat here staring at our flow of traffic for quite some time, and I've come up with a few things that I'd like to do from the least invasive to the most invasive. And what I mean by that is things like upgrading the capacity of roads, applying different policies, changing public transportation, or even adding in new public transportation as well as to the most invasive would be things like changing road, like uh, not changing roads, like adding in intersections, demolishing roads, adding in new connections, things that would demolish buildings in the process. I want to stay away from building demolishment, but sometimes it happens. And so I want to save those for last as the, as the hopefully saving grace. So one of the things you want to do first before you even decide what, just so that we even know what the heck is even going on, you want to select a segment or road where the traffic is. And we know that we have a lot of traffic coming over this bridge, but we also have, have them coming from the roundabout. So we want to select the piece of road where they're all turning into. I'm going to pause it just so that way we can get a good idea of where these people are coming from and where they're going. Let's start from left to right. It looks like we have a whole bunch of people coming from actually trying to leave this city in both directions. They just want to get out of the city over here. But as far as the people that were in conflict causing all the traffic, it looks like they're coming from this entire end of the city over here, as well as, as well as just some of these areas over here. And it looks like all these ones are sparse enough. It's just that as we go along, they slowly collect more and more people that eventually adds up into the conflict we're seeing over here. And it looks like they're just trying to get to this entire area all over. So now we know that the majority of our traffic on that particular area is for the entire downtown, I guess, over here, where we have our airport, our amusement park, our stadium, as well as our intercity train station and our harbor. And so the other problem area we have to deal with is actually this road over here in between where the toll road connects into this main road and with that has the industry area on the other side. So I've separated down to just private vehicles and trucks. Private vehicles I'm not too concerned with because of how small they are. I would actually like to focus on the trucks in this area and how they go about getting over here and where they're going. Looks like quite a few of them are going into this industry area over here as well as then eventually onto the highway. And even just down over here as well as into our warehousing area which tells me that a lot of these trucks in this industry area find this toll road as the quickest way to get over there and they want to use this road to get there and back so we want to find ways to encourage these this industry area to instead split its traffic up between this main road over here as well as this main road over here and we can do that in a couple of ways, but for now, we just want to figure out where our problem areas that lie. Now, when we look at this one, oh, we only have, there we go. We can say that there's a lot of private vehicles that are trying to come over from this end of town 
through here and then redistribute themselves all through here where we have high density housing as well as commercial and even the university. So I think this one over here is actually just going to be a very simple fix of increasing the capacity so that way they're not just turning into one singular lane. So that way they have multiple lanes to choose from all the way down. So that way they're going to be easily distributed throughout this entire area. And so when we're trying to think of the first thing, which is road capacity, the very first thing I can think of is most of the people who were on this road were trying to cross over and that's where all the traffic was occurring. So I want to take this four lane road over here, the four lane two unit one, and just upgrade that all the way down. I actually don't know if we can upgrade this to a... Oh, it looks like we can. So actually, let's do this to the larger four lane one. Hmm, maybe actually even the six unit one would be perfectly fine since we already have the six unit, since we already have the six lane one over here. We can help them by picking their lane even further back than up there. As far as the other road capacity, I think we want to follow this road down just a little bit. The first one we run into is this one over here. Now let's take a look at our routes just to see how many people are actually choosing to use this. And it's not many, so I'm not going to concern myself too much with that. But right over here, it looks like is where people start to break off the most. So let's look at this intersection and see if we can upgrade anything. This one on the left, we can upgrade to a six lane. And then we can't upgrade to four lanes over here because, well, we destroy buildings in the process. So we'll go back to our two unit wide and we'll upgrade with these four unit lane, two, er, two unit wide four lane roads. My goodness, these names are such a mouthful. But that way it'll just give them a choice where they can either turn left or, yeah, just gives them more lane options in order to get around. This one on the right, we can't really do much with. So let's continue down to the next intersection here. Same thing over here. We can upgrade the one on the left to the six lane road, except this time we don't have to upgrade anything beyond it because each lane now can turn in any direction. So unless we start seeing traffic backups over here because people are trying to turn left all into one particular lane over here, that's when we'll think about the lane math as far as these smaller roads beyond that. And this one has a four lane on the left, but a six lane on the right. So we're just going to go ahead and upgrade. Oh, well, we lost a couple buildings in the process. Oh, well, things happen. But now we have a six unit lane over here. And same thing as the last intersection. We don't have to worry about the roads beyond it until we notice it's actually having a problem. And I, th I believe that would be everything we need to think about as far as our road capacity on this end. And if we follow onto the other end of the toll road, I didn't plan enough in order to upgrade this particular truss bridge into something else. And I'm actually unwilling to upgrade this to the four unit lane road, because if we do, it gets rid of the truss. And I don't like that. I really like the feature the truss adds. I think it looks really great. So I'm willing to accept only a two unit lane road over here, especially or sorry, a two lane road over here, especially since it's going into a roundabout, which means they only have one direction they can go. They don't have to go left or right or straight. And the roads off of this roundabout are already a six lane road that leads into the entire area. So I don't think we have to think about anything beyond this. So now let's look over at our problem area number two. We know that the trucks are coming out and in this area to get to the toll road. And we want to encourage this industry area to take more options. First thing I'm going to do is to just upgrade this one here to a six lane road. You might be saying, why a six lane? Because we have a four lane two unit wide over here, and that'll give them two turn lanes over here. It looks like we have a traffic light that'll just cause problems. So now they can pick a lane ahead of time for when they need to turn left or right. And that should just help them flow a little bit easier out of here. As far as other options, when we come over here, we see that we only have a four lane road down this way. And now four lane roads have a slower speed than the six lane ones. You can see this four lane one has a speed of 50 and the six lane one has a speed of 60. So I wanna go through and just upgrade this whole road to the six unit one. 
to possibly encourage more trucks to take this route. I don't know how effective it'll be, but we can try. Now, I think I said over here, this will probably be an easier fix where we just go to our two unit wide roads and plop down all of our four unit lanes, four lane, two unit roads. Oh my goodness. I swear these things are just a little too much of a mouthful for me to process, I guess. Now this one has buses on it, I know, so I want to keep this one as a bus only road, but we can do some easy things like putting some there. And this one also has buses, so I'm going to go ahead and leave that one alone as well. But this should help distribute people even more. And here's the some of the traffic I was referring to that this area experiences, which will hopefully get this fixed some point this episode. My goal this episode is to remove our only traffic light. Now that we've got that done, all the least invasive way of just upgrading the roads, we can start to think about things like policies. Now, when we go through here, we want to make sure that none of our districts that have traffic bans or old towns are overlapping onto any of the major roads. If we look over here, this one on the left does have a heavy traffic ban and it's slightly overlapping. It doesn't look like it's causing any sort of problems, but I just want to make sure by cleaning these up and pulling them off of these roads. I don't want any sort of weird mishap where maybe one of these does overlap and now people can't get to where they need to go. And as far as other policies go, this one we're actually going to have to get into the next thing first for the public transportation. And the one I'm talking about or referring to is actually the, for services, prefer ferries. I'm going to activate that for the entire city because if we come into our transportation view here, we do have a ferry line that goes from this end of the high density area over here all the way down to where well all of them were trying to go so we want to try and encourage them to use that line that has direct access to it of course i do want to start thinking about the people on this end of town because they don't have any sort of mass transit to just get them around the city they pretty much have to rely on their monorail and bus lines to take them over to this metro or the ferry or just drive themselves. And seeing how the metro and the ferry are out of their way when trying to get to this area over here, they're probably just going to drive. And that's probably what's causing most of our traffic in that area. So what I'm going to do is actually come down over here somewhere and think about where I want to put in a ferry stop. We're going to want one of these ferry piers that has two stops on it because we're going to want one going in each direction. One for the stop going upstream and one for the stop going downstream. I would like to put it as close to the monorail station over here as possible, but I also want to think about not destroying any buildings. Over here, since we already have the zoning control to the fence, maybe this might be one of the better places to go. It looks like it's within walking distance of the monorail over there. And I think that would be, I think over here it would be perfectly fine. So I'm going to pause the game because we do have to demolish some roads and trees and whatnot. And I don't want our Sims to abandon their buildings just yet. Well, actually, I don't want them to abandon their buildings at all. We can go ahead and click play and hopefully none of these building. Oh, well, really? Oh my goodness. All right, whatever. We'll just have new buildings grow in there, I guess. That's fine. I was hoping that we didn't wouldn't destroy them, but looks like I am unsuccessful with that. So now they have access to that ferry line as well, but I don't want to just stop there. I want a form of high-speed transit to pull them out of this area, just like they do on this side of the area. Now, I know because of I, I know because I'm, I'm planning this that I want to eventually move up to the top of this hill up there and I would like to have a form of high-speed transit that brings them up there. So I was thinking of using this particular metro station, the large underground one that has lines going in two different directions. So that way we can have our line that takes them down over here into the area that they want to go as well as up into the future development. 
And so for this, we do need to think about how we're going to bring the line down around and then up into this area because all of our metro stations over here are running in the same direction. Oh, that's nice. Thank you. Are running in the same direction as the stop we're trying to use. So I was thinking that we could actually bring them down over here somewhere into the into this fishing area because we do have the whoops we do have the fish market here and this does attract tourists and I think the only reason why it doesn't have any tourists right now is well because it's a little bit difficult for them to get over here. And another area we could put it is actually over in this end where we have a lot of high density residential as well as a lot of generic industry and offices as well as education and our ways in and out of the city. I was thinking let's just go ahead and try and see where we can fit one of these in. We could fit it in over here but it's not facing the right direction. We have to find some roads where it would be so if we put it down over here, it'll be able to easily curve into the airport while also having a gentler curve to pull up into the fish area over here. And if we look at our other forms of public transportation, you can see we have a bus stop right here as well, which would take them to the industry as well as over both to the education and into the harbor. So I actually think this area would be pretty neat to put it. I think it would be perfectly fine. And as far as over here, this is where we also have to think, where we need it to run in this particular direction. And I'm thinking, I don't want to just use a basic one over here. Although it would probably fit pretty nicely with the repeating patterns of boring. But I kind of want to go into our content creator metro lines. And we have the regular Sunken Island platform metro I don't know if that'll fit or not. It's looking like it's giving me trouble here. And it looks like it won't fit over here. It, it won't fit over there either. I'm going to try deleting this parking structure. And well, it, I guess that fits now. Actually, let's see if the bigger one will fit over here now that we've deleted the parking. No, it won't. So we're going to have to use the smaller one over here. I think right there would be perfectly fine. It would be kind of cool to see it as you're coming down the bridge or something might be able to catch a glimpse of a monorail driving underground or something. Well, maybe not, but it was a cool idea anyways. So let's get these hooked up. All right, so I've got the area or the, not the area. I have the metro line built out and connected up. I've chosen the hot pink line with the 500 capacity car, and I think that'll be perfectly fine. I decided to make it a separate line than the brown one. This is supposed to be a gold line, but I think it's kind of difficult. Oh no, no, it's not. This one's supposed to be the brown line. I have it a different color or a different route than the brown one just to, I don't know. I don't know why I put a different one. Maybe I could have just done the same one, but it is what it is. And I'm hoping that this will help encourage more people to take this high capacity transit over into this area here. So now that we have these forms of high capacity transit in place with the particular ferry stops and the metro stops, we want to think about how people can get to these things with things like the bus lines. So if we come over here, we have this metro stop here, but this whole area over here doesn't have a single bus stop. As well as if we come over here, they have the trams here, but other than that, they have to walk around over here. This one, we don't really have to think about. I think I did this bus stop decent enough, but I'm gonna go around the city and I'm gonna readjust a whole bunch of things. It's really boring, takes a long time. So I'm not gonna bore you with that. And when I'm done, I'll just kind of let you know what I've done and why I did it. I just wanted to um, stop by and say, oh my goodness, I didn't realize that the prefer fairies would put this many people on our ferries going from like maybe 20 weekly users to looks like over a thousand people tr just trying to use this every week. Yeah, just wanted to give you an update. I'm going to have to fix this as well. I will be right back. All right, here we are. I've gone through and I've adjusted all the routes except for one bus route, just so I can kind of show you my thought process a little bit on how I was modifying them. But to start, I want to take a look at this ferry line here. 
I just want to let you know to begin with, we only had four fairies with a capacity of 40 each. And as you can see, we have 17 fairies on this line now. And like, just to see, we have three completely full fairies and all these other fairies. I'm pausing this right now. I think it's just a load of crap where it says our weekly passengers are only like 213. I, this is absolutely insane and absurd. It's so many people and we have 17 fairies. I'm actually even considering putting down an 18th fairy because of this stop right here in the middle by this high density that leads to our harbor. Just takes so many people. I wish when they gave us the fairies, they gave us fairies with higher capacities, not lower capacities. I understand why they have the lower capacity ones because, well, 50 is overkill if you're not using the utilize fairies policy. But if you do use the utilize fairies policy, apparently this is absolutely absurd with how many people want to use your fairy line. But yeah, so for the bus line, what I was thinking is I left bus line six alone here. And if we take a look at this, we could see originally I was using 224% of our vehicle count modifier for 12 vehicles with the 30 capacity bus. And as we watch this, you'll see it never even reaches half capacity. So one thing that we can do is we could just reduce the number of vehicles in half by six. That way it creates sparser buses. We're back down to normal with 100% on our vehicle count. Let's lower just a little bit more to 100% actually. If, I, if we can do that. I don't know why we can't just click on it and type in there. That's pretty much what I did for every single route in this city. It took just a little bit of time, but it's a lot easier when you're doing a whole bunch at once. So that was the third option, or sorry, the second option we have for increasing our transportation, or sorry, lowering our traffic in some of our problem areas. And the area that I was thinking that would help would be this particular bridge over here, which now that I've upgraded it, I don't think it looks that great, but you know what? What's done is done. I'll just have to live with that. As well as our intersection over here, which it looks like it, this is still giving us a little bit of trouble. And so now I think we need to move into the last thing or the last option, which is actually adding in roads or demolishing roads. Things like that, you'd want to take a look at your main road and just kind of double check to see are these necessary connections or are these unnecessary connections or are we even just lacking connections? For instance, over here, we only have one connection in from this main road in order to get to all the industry back there. Our residential is fine because we have some high speed transit as well as some bus routes and things like that to get around. But for the truck routes, this is the only, only way that they can go. And I think now that we've won our game, everybody wants to leave the city. So we're gonna see a little bit more traffic going on on the road right now than what normally happens, but we don't have to let that bother us. But the route that we were thinking of that was the toughest was this one over here, trying to get these people, this entire region on this side of the river, out and into this side of the river. And most of them were wanting to enter in over here somehow. And they're all wanting to funnel in through this one little tiny bridge and over this one. So I'm thinking we need to just add more connectivity. And I don't think we have any space anywhere for another bridge. I think if we tried to fit one in, it would just look awkward, it would be awkward, and I don't think it would function as we would want it to. So the way that I was thinking was to actually add another highway connection right over here in this little corner. Originally, my original plan was to actually buy this tile off to the right and build a really nice interchange over here. But unfortunately, in the vanilla version of the game, we cannot buy that tile. And so I had to settle for this little tiny one. And off of the main one that I would have bought, I would have had highway access that came up into this area up top and gave these people over here highway access. And unfortunately, since we can't do that, I'll have to figure out another way to give them highway access. And that's where my thought on this area comes into play. I want to have a three-way connection that comes off and runs around over here. I'd like it to plug into this roundabout 
right where this industrial road is connecting in. I'd like them to meet up at some point in this at a high spot over here, where from that high spot we can create a switchback that will eventually go up to the top of this hill and then provide the top of the hill with highway access as well. But for now, how I think that would help would be to remove the amount of people that are trying to use this bridge that have to come into direct conflict with opposing traffic in the left and right direction. If we have them get onto the highway, instead they'll come over here and then they'll have to go around the roundabout, which means that they have a lot less to worry about when trying to get over here. And if they wanted to come further over into this area over here, such as in this area, they would come down the highway and take this highway off ramp and then take the bridge over. So that way it would dilute how or where this traffic is coming from. So it's not all coming from this same intersection over here. At least that's my thought process, and I'm going to hope it works out. I think everything's been working out so far. If we look at our traffic, we're still in the low 80s, but we did just have a, have a sports game over here. So hopefully when I add this intersection in and we just let the traffic run for a little while, it'll all work out. So I'm actually going to time lapse this because I'm still not very good at talking while I do things. I'm still really new at this content stuff. Bada bing, bada boom. And what do you know? We've got ourselves a highway off ramp that's all connected up. We can unpause the simulation. And I like it. I actually really like the way this looks. I think now all I need to do is terraform around it. And that's actually kind of a whole separate thing. I'll just kind of touch on it briefly. You see how we have these cliffs here on the side? If you want to get rid of these, you could just use the soften terrain tool. But you still, we kind of got a little bit maybe like over here where if you try and use the soften terrain tool it doesn't quite get rid of them now what you can do for that is you take your slope terrain tool go to the smaller brush size pick a contour line farther up the hill and just drag it up there and keep doing that repeatedly all along now you might be asking yourself well, what does that have to do with anything how does that help with cliffing you're gonna have to do this a few times but as once you do that, you can come back around with your softened terrain tool and then get rid of some of the bumps and lumps and whatnot. And it'll slowly start to get rid of your cliff faces like this over here. So I'm going to get this all done up and prettied with my terrain tools and I'll be right back. All right, so my terraforming is done and there's only some slight cliffing left where you can kind of see it in the ground a little bit right here and along the roundabout. But for the most part, I got rid of it down here as well around the elementary schools and the whatever the city service area over here. So I did my best to get rid of it. Now I know you're not here for cliffs and whatnot, so let's get back to traffic. And it looks like while we were busy doing all of that, it looks like the areas that I was concerned about aren't experiencing anything whatsoever. And in fact, if we go down this road, I bet... I'd be able to just completely remove this junction here and traffic would flow even smoother there. If we come over here, this road looks like it's doing perfectly fine now that we've increased its capacity to get across. And maybe if we looked at this particular area's routes to include trucks as well, it looks like they all still want to go down the toll road, but it looks like we've encouraged some to also go down that main road over there. So it looks like we did not successfully convince anybody to use this particular road over here except for that one truck we're looking at now but it looks like that one's not from this industry area this one's going to be one that i'll have to watch in my free time because this is this one is a very rare occurrence where this particular center road backs up trying to get people in into and out of this particular region over here but i have no doubt that if we continue to watch this we will continue to see the traffic's doing great. So I think I'll leave it here for a little bit on maybe triple speed or something. And then I'll just kind of check it out to see how 
what kind of an impact we had on our traffic. So I will be right back. All right, so while I was watching traffic, one of the things I noticed was in one of the previous episodes where I moved the toll booths, I had actually intended to take the toll booth that was originally over here and move it over here by the warehouses. And it looks like I actually completely forgot to do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and add that in right now and hopefully that will dissuade more trucks from using this toll road. If not, it's okay, we'll be fine. So that seems to have done it. It looks like now we have more trucks using to use this particular road down here to get here from our warehousing district, at least into this one spot. And even this spot, it looks like now trucks are starting to use this route. And just not this one. But that's okay, at least now we are dissuading some trucks from using the toll road. And it looks like even more are now using the main road over there. Except for this one, which that kind of makes sense. This farming one is on the right hand side, which would use that road, so... All we had to do was... Fix a mistake I hadn't done in a while. Alright, so I was watching it for quite some time, and I was really scratching my head, because I was hoping all the changes I put in would equal more than just a 5% increase to the low end of our traffic range. Because we were dipping down into the 79% range before this episode, and when I was sitting there watching it, it would sometimes get down to 84%. And that's when I realized I forgot the biggest thing, the very first thing, the most non-invasive thing we can do, the policies. I completely forgot about public transportation, free public transportation. Now this is going to negatively impact our budget a little bit, but if you've noticed, I think we started around 30 million and now we're into 32 million. I think we're gonna be okay if we go ahead and activate this policy. And after I did, I sat here and watched our average traffic flow. And so far it hasn't dipped beneath 87. And in fact, you just saw it go up to 89. I didn't see it go up into 90. And I think that's because of a few areas that I think are going to change in the future when I work on certain areas and finish certain things. So once that happens, I think we will be floating steadily around 90%. Thank you for your viewership. I greatly appreciate it. It means a lot to me. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something. And I hope you enjoyed the bonus tutorial about moving land in order to get rid of cliffs. And yeah, I hope to see you in the next one. And thank you again. Bye-bye.